Hello, insiders, and welcome to another Wednesday edition of Facebook Live. Happy Wednesday, veterans, and thank you for spending some time with us today. Before we get started with today's topic, let's get a little sound off in the in the comments. Uh, let us know where you're turning in from and, and what branch you served in. All right. And while you're doing that, we'll uh, we'll call some people out, tell them hello. Um, with me today is VCM Donnie Witten, and I am Coach Daryl. Donnie, you want to go down and just tell them a little bit about yourself? Yeah, brother. Thanks for the intro. Always, let, always happy to be here with you. I'm a United States Army combat veteran. Uh, I was uh, <clears throat> I was in from '99 to '06, part of the invasion force in Iraq in '03, and uh, after that, I was a Union Boilermaker, and then started uh, went back to school and have been working veteran claims ever since and uh came to va claims insiders as a client and then a coach and then now here i am it's been uh it's been a great a great trip and there's nothing better than waking up to serve veterans every day every day i get to do this is a blessing i hear you i hear you i enjoy it i enjoy it as well um it's never a day of work is it never never right um so just a little bit about me. I'm a Marine Corps veteran. Um, I served during the first Gulf War. Um, after I got out of the Marine Corps, I actually went to college and became a teacher. Um, I was a high school history teacher, and I also coached several sports, football, you know, baseball, softball, girl softball. I did a little girl softball, um, wrestling, track, hockey, you name it. Um, left teaching, and I, I went to work for the VA. So I've actually been working with veterans for over 14 years. Um, the 11 years I worked for the VA, six and a half that I was a rating specialist. So um, came to VACI and it's it's been, you know, it's just been an awesome time ever since working with veterans, getting to know veterans. Um, that's one thing that the VA doesn't really have. You don't really get to have that one on one personal time with veterans. So it's always awesome. Um, looking in the chat, looks like we've got quite a few Navy veterans. Um, Dean, you've, you've, got, you've got a son in the court now, too, don't you? I do. Yes, I do. He's actually in uh, uh, New River. Is it North Carolina, <clears throat> South Carolina, <laughs> just outside Cherry Point? But yeah, yeah, I do. Um, he's a uh, he's an airframe mechanic for, on the Osprey, so he's he's uh, he's enjoying life as a Marine. Um, we got a lot of Army veterans in here. Juan Varela, U.S. Army, retired, twenty five years, active duty. Thank you for your service, Juan. Um, Navy, we got some Navy in here, Carol Semplis. And if I'm butchering last names, I do apologize. All right. Uh, M steel from Savannah, Georgia. You know, I've been to Savannah, Georgia, beautiful place. Uh, army 1980 to 83. Valerie Cortazzo, 28 years. Wow. Wow. It's a long time. Uh, all my Marine brothers and sisters out there, Semper Fi, welcome to the show. Roberta Young, another 28 years. Got a lot of experience in the in the chat right now. Seriously. Wow. Thank you all. Thank you all for everything you've done. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. David, U.S. Navy, 84 to 94. California National Guard, 94 to 03. Blythe, California. I'm very familiar with Blythe. I actually lived in Yuma, Arizona for about 18 years. So very familiar with Blythe. Clint Bradley, Marine Corps, Desert Storm. Teresa Curry. Good afternoon. I'm in Donata something. Yeah, I can't even do that one. Florida. Spent 10 years in the Air Force. That is a hard name to say. Thonotosasa? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 10 years in the Air Force. Wow. Um, I'd like to extend a very special welcome to all of our Vietnam veterans that we have uh, currently in this in this uh, Facebook Live. Welcome home. Um, I know you guys didn't get the welcome home that you deserved, um, but welcome home. Happy to have you with us today. Pensacola, Florida. Robert Brooks, Navy veteran, 77 to 97, a solid 20 years. Brian, I like 
area of Florida. I was down there for EOD school. I love that area. Uh, yeah, my my boy was at NAS Pensacola with uh, when he was going to his A school. Never got to go. Jen got to go. Jen went down there and visited, but I didn't get to go. Vietnam, Ooh, a lot of a lot of Vietnam vets today. DMAC was saying, it always feels good getting getting wins for the for the Vietnam guys because you know they did not get that same that same exchange when they got back. They did not. <clears throat> All right. July, Marty Tate retired July 20, 2022, still under review. Ooh, you just got out, buddy. Thank you for your service. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's one of the hardest things for for uh, for veterans also is that adjustment from civilian life to, or from military life to civilian life. Um, so congratulations on your retirement, Marty. And, uh, you know, you're in the right place like-minded veterans um, going through some of the same stuff that, that you're going through. If you're not going through it currently, you may be going through it in the future. So, um, which brings us to our topic for today. We are going to talk about the VA claims uh, insider, the golden circle. What does it take to win your claim? All right. Um, before we start though, I have to read this disclaimer or I'm going to read this disclaimer. Uh, we are not accredited agents, BSOs, attorneys, or any other entity recognized by the department of veterans affairs. And we are not affiliated with the VA in any way. VA Claims Insider is an education-based coaching consulting company for disabled veterans exploring eligibility for increased VA disability benefits and who wish to learn more about that process. VA Claims Insider also connects veterans with vetted independent medical professionals in our referral network for medical examinations and independent medical opinions, also known as IMOs, for a wide variety or a wide range of disability conditions. All right. So, Donna, you want to tell us a little bit about the SEM method, the strategy, education, medical evidence? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, what we really want to do here at VA Claims Insiders is take a very complex and uh, uh, difficult system to navigate and make it simple, right? Keep it simple. And we do that by our SEM method, strategy, education, and medical evidence. Claims are won and lost uh, with medical evidence. So what happens in the, the uh, in the elite program, you get signed up and you're assigned a coach and you go into our proprietary insider portal and complete these tasks. You upload your documents. Coach reviews your documents and you sit down with your coach and you have you develop a strategy. The strategy is, bet, is, is uh, how you're going to get to the rating that you morally, ethically, and legally deserve, right? So that strategy is based on... Um, known uh, secondary service connections, what you have that might be able to be uh, connected directly to service or secondary to another disability, something like that. And you set up the, the order in which um, you're going to go through this process and the, the method that uh, you're going to use to achieve those. And secondarily, what's extremely important is the education piece, right? We want to educate you, the client, on what you're going to be rated on, the necessary things to establish service connection all of that right so you have to go through this process there's no there's no substitute for that no one can attend a cnp exam for you nobody can do these things for you so you have to get the education that you need to get the rating that you deserve i could and i could sit here and we could speak every day for a year straight for eight hours a day and i would never know your story like you know your story so what we need to do is educate you so that you are able to represent yourself the best way you can. And then we identify any pieces of medical evidence that's necessary to establish service connection and or ascertain um, the severity of your symptoms in accordance with 38 CFR so that you can get the rating you deserve after you get the service connection. And that's it, the strategy, education, and medical evidence. Um, you can hear more about that uh, from a discovery call. And you know, we have uh, people willing to tell you about our program. Um, you call in, get a, get a chat with one of our one of our people who can tell you all about the program, um, and that's you know that's what they're to do. Explain this to you and 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 let you decide if this is the right program for you or not. Um, but that sim method is key in our process. Right on, right on. Thank you for that, Donnie. And and one of the things you do get is you get that one on one coaching, right? Um, you get the experience uh, of of coaches like myself and and you. 
um, you get that experience, you get that strategy session, you know, that the coach will look over your information, find the best path for you to go. Um, you'll get that coaching with the claim submission, and then you'll also get that CMP prep. Um, you know, the most important day in the, in the whole claims process is that CMP exam. So you'll get that as well. Um, but you don't know if, if you don't, you don't know what you don't know, right? Um, famous line thrown around here quite a bit. Uh, so if you get, to, you know, if you're not already a client, if you're not already a veteran that signed up with us, make sure you do the discovery call, um, get hooked up with a coach and go over your stuff. Okay. Um, now we do offer this Facebook live, but we also offer a lot of educational materials. Um, you know, we got zoom classes three times a day. Um, we've got uh we've got coffee with the coaches every morning you know we've got the mental health exam prep we got the medical exam prep so we've got a lot we've got a lot going on here at the company but today we're going to talk specifically about what it what you need to win your claim um the va does have certain criteria and they do have certain expectations that you have to meet in order to uh even qualify for benefits to start with and one of those qualifications is you have to be a you have to be a veteran and, and you have to have been discharged with with a good discharge. Now, Donnie, can you explain a little bit what a good discharge is? Yeah. Um, and, you know, t so to be clear, you don't have to have you can have a general discharge um, and things like that. You just can't have a bad conduct discharge. Right. And some people get worried about that. They say, well, I, I was general, you know, but really what it is, is you can't have a bad conduct. You can't have been court martialed. You can't have been dishonorably discharged, things like that. Um, if you got it on good terms for the most part, then you're going to qualify for business for, for benefits. Right. The three big ones are the, the disqualify you from benefits are the, the big chicken dinner, as we call it, or the bad conduct discharge, the dishonorable discharge and the uh, other than honorable discharge. Those three right there are pretty much a bar to benefits. Um, and, and you'll have to go in and either get that, that upgraded, that discharge upgraded um, or, uh, you just won't get benefits. Okay. So make sure if you're, if you're signing up, have that good discharge, um, get with a coach, start moving forward. But the VA also requires that you have what's called, uh, it, it's called the Calusa triangle. And the Calusa triangle consists of, of an event in service, right? So you had to have some kind of an accident, injury, illness while you were in service. Um, you have to have a current complaint um, diagnosis, and then you have to have a nexus or a link linking those together. Um, there are other ways of doing it through secondary conditions. And uh, I don't know, Donnie, you want to touch on secondary conditions a little bit or? Yeah, absolutely. So a secondary condition is when you have a disability that is caused or made worse by an already service connected condition. For example, if you have uh, post-traumatic stress disorder and you have to take a bunch of pills for those and maybe they make your 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 indigestion really bad or your your bowel process is irregular um then that's grounds for service connection or maybe you have tinnitus and um when tinnitus is you know really bad it it, it aggravates your migraines and um, so that's grounds for service connection. And, and as Daryl was saying, you know, there's three elements, right? The in-service event or stressor, the um, current diagnosis, and the nexus. So a nexus is usually the last thing you establish in most cases because you have to have the current diagnosis and the in-service event. And I always, I always explain nexus is like the bridge that bridges those two things. It connects them. And that's, that's what nexus means. It's a fancy term for connection. Um, but... <clears throat> You have to have that, that first thing service connected, and then you have to get a current diagnosis for the second condition. And then the nexus is the evidence that bridges those two. And oftentimes that comes in form in the form of a, a, a nexus letter. Um, you know, and that's the great thing about the, the elite program. And, uh, you know, you, you get you get uh, you can get connected with vetted medical professionals um, in our network that uh, are able to look and when warranted, um, help you, uh, navigate that system. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I get asked a lot of questions, especially being a former Raider. Um, well, how do I, how do I establish an event in service? Um, the way you establish that event in service is clearly, 
and by going to sick call. Um, when you get hurt in service, and I know I know a lot of people are going to say, well, we were discouraged from going to sick call, which is true. Um, you know, called names, whatever, for going to sick call. Um, but the main way to get things service connected is is on a direct basis, and that is going having an event that was actually registered in your service treatment records or in your medical file through service that you were, you were seen for this condition while in service. All right. And I'll use the example of a back condition because that seems to be a lot of, of what's out there. So you were seen for a back condition while in service. Um, You're out on a 30 mile on a 30 mile hump and your rucksack weighed 60 pounds and you want to perk your back. Okay. So now years later, you're having a back condition again. You know, your back never got better from in service. And now you're back, you're having a back condition again. So what you need to do is you need to try to draw that link between your current back condition and your back condition in service. And that's done through that nexus letter. Um, because a lot of veterans don't go to sick call while they're in service, that's when we start looking at secondary things, right? Um so that nexus is an important piece. That's that missing piece of the puzzle. And yeah, we do have vetted uh, medical professionals that will will help um, if there is a connection there, help write that connection, right? Um, I get asked a lot of questions also about, and, and I'm just going to cover sleep apnea real quick. And I want everybody to keep in mind that if you're, just because you're going to the VA and being seen for a condition, remember, you still have to meet the three criteria of the Clues of Triangle, right? So, so, sorry, my dog. Um, so if you have a, you know, if you, if you're diagnosed with sleep apnea through the VA, yeah, the VA diagnosed you with it, but what was the event and service that you're linking it to? So keep that in mind. You have to have those three things. Um, now the DMAC, I, I always compare it to, you know, people, and people often think that just because the VA diagnosed you, that, 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 that means it should be able to be service connected. Right. But, you know, you know, I got out in 2006 and if I walk outside and um, kick my couch because I'm mad at my dog and break my toe and go to the VA and they diagnose me with a broken toe, that doesn't mean that I can service connected. I just kicked the couch. So we still have those 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 obligations you're talking about, the nexus and the in-service event. Right. Right. So Brian Reese and VACI have added an extra part to that Calusa triangle and we actually call it the golden circle. Um, the last part of that golden circle you need, and it makes total sense, you need to have the severity of the symptoms in terms of frequency, severity, and duration, right? So, you know, having that condition, but being able to speak to that condition is also very important in the whole in the whole circle. Um, and, you know, if any one of the first three parts are missing, the fourth part is, is uh, I'm not going to say it's irrelevant, but it's it's very important that you're able to explain that. So, could you go over a little bit on the on the the severity of symptoms in terms of frequency? Yeah. So, yeah, and you know, it, what you, this is where the education portion of our strategy, education and medical evidence comes really. Uh, it's really important because you know not all conditions are rated the same, and sometimes you know uh, severity and frequency, like not all of those terms apply. So, you know, for as you discussed, the back condition um, under certain rating codes, it's simply how far you bend and flex. Uh, and that's it. And it's important to know that because a lot of times clients will say, well, you know, but I, I just, you know, I just went through this therapy or I've had all these things and they gave me all these pills. But if that's not how it's rated, then that's not the important piece to express. Now, getting treatment's important um, and showing that continuity of care and that, that it is it is a problem. <laughs> However, expressing that isn't the important thing to express right so um for example with with headaches frequency uh and severity is important because frequency you know if you're having an average of one a head, one headache one prostrating headache which goes to the severity piece um then that's that's what's important you're looking at prostrating does it make you lay down and frequency how often an average of once a month um and knowing that you're able to express those that information if you don't know that and you go in and you're like well but i have nine different pills for migraines i'm taking and that's that's your focus because you think that's the important thing then you're not educated on the process and you're not going to express your symptoms in the way in which you're going to get adequately rated 
So expression of those symptoms is very important. And on top of that, not just being able to express those symptoms, but if, if you don't have any current treatment for that condition, getting your butt to the doctor, very important to get that documentation as well. Um, so if you don't have any current treatment for a condition, um, that's the best way to establish that severity, right? Is, is by going to the doctor. And I like what you said, Donnie, about, um, about certain conditions having being based on other things, you know, most musculoskeletal, uh, most muscle musculoskeletal conditions are based on number one, painful motion. Now a painful motion is going to get you 10% probably tops. All right. So yeah, then everything else is based on range of motion, any kind of joint, knee, back, hips, uh, shoulders, elbows, they're all based on range of motion. So if you've got that 10% um, for the painful motion already, establish that loss of range of motion. That's that's important. And you do that by getting yourself to the doctor, right? So make sure you get yourself to the doctor and get seen for that stuff. Um, frequency, severity, um, that's all it's all things that that you need to be able to speak to. And, and if you sign up for a free uh, that 30 that 30 minute discovery call um, and you don't think or you're not sure if you have a condition, then do that 30 that 30 minutes call and, and talk with somebody. They can help you walk through it, which is definitely something we provide here, too. Um, one of the most important things when you're talking about all of this and service connection is knowing the severity of your symptoms. Right know your symptoms. I don't know your symptoms. Donnie doesn't know your symptoms. You need to know your symptoms and you be, need to be able to speak to those symptoms. Okay. No matter how difficult it may be. Okay. Um, and that's, how, that's where that education piece comes in really important, right? And those, those classes you were talking about earlier, you know, right. so, and when you sign up for our elite program, um, you don't get just your coach, you get, you get a team and you have this, the, all these classes, which have a variety of coaches teaching these classes and you get the community. You have a, you get a network of other veterans who are in these classes asking questions who've been around for a while. They're asking questions you haven't even thought of yet. And when you get our team of coaches, we're all here working together, right? You know, Daryl answers questions for the coaches all the time. I answer questions for other coaches all the time. I ask Daryl questions, you know, um, Daryl's probably forgot more about the VA than I've ever known. I mean, and this is, we're all one big team. We share this as a community, this knowledge, and we put it forward. Um, but the only way you get that is, you know, sign up for the coach, the elite program, get in there, uh, get your education so you can you can get your, your symptoms. Um, you, you know the education behind your symptoms. Um, I mean, we, uh, we have, a, that's, a, that's a separate link than the other one. Um, so whichever one you think would be a good fit for you, get some information or get signed up and yeah and get access get access to all those classes and get access to the to the facebook and all all that stuff that we we offer um quoted it was once said that our free stuff is better than most people's paid stuff right our free our free education is better than most people's paid education but we'll leave it at that now um let's go let's go back a little bit here let's talk about events and service okay because there are some important there's some important aspects that people need to know when they're talking about events and service all right number one if you have an event in service let's and that event in service resolves itself while you're in service um it's it's considered resolved so you're kind of drawing a blank there as far as as far as getting that service connected right so um once the va says it's resolved or once your doctor says it's resolved that means that there's that's no longer there. All right. Another thing to consider would be presumptive conditions. All right. And I know with the PACT Act out, presumptive conditions are huge right now. All right. Burn pit, Agent Orange exposure, um, 38 CFR 3.309 covers covers a lot of, of presumptive condition, presumptive of service, presumptive of, of burn pits, presumptive of uh, contaminated water. Um, so with that, the only thing you need to have as far as a presumptive condition goes, as long as you're within the time limit given, um, is, is that DD-214 showing that you were in that location. That is your nexus. That is your link, right? So um, with the contaminated water, let's, let's go back. Let's say, let's say with uh, burn pits, you have the Southwest Asia Service Medal in that, in that place. So now all you need to have is that current condition, that presumptive condition, 
right? So that still meets the needs of the Calusa Triangle. And then adding that fourth piece in there, you need to speak to the severity of those symptoms. Um, right, right, Donnie? <laughs> yeah, and what DMAC means by um, um, you have to have that condition, he means you need a diagnosis. Um, I see a lot of times veterans say, well, well, I have that, I have that condition. Well, you have to go to the doctor. You have to get diagnosed for the condition. Um, you need that medical evidence, right? Strategy, education, medical evidence. You have to get that diagnosis to meet that that requirement. Just saying you have the condition oftentimes is not enough. No, you do have to have that diagnosis. That's absolutely right. And and with that, you know, exposure in and of itself is not a disability. So, you know, if you're a Vietnam veteran and you were in, um, you know, you were in Da Nang, um, you were exposed to Agent Orange, right? But being exposed isn't enough. You actually have to have one of those conditions. Same way with contaminated water in, in uh, Lejeune. Um, same way with with um, burn pits. Same way with Gulf War syndrome. You actually have to have a condition diagnosed in order to get it to work. Um, and that is something you can talk to a coach about here. Okay. Um, so we've talked about in-service events. We've talked about the nexus, the link, linking it together. Um, we've talked about secondary conditions. Secondary conditions can be linked to your primary condition. Um, you'll still it still requires that collusive triangle. You still have to have that link linking it together. Um, and then we talked about severity of symptoms and being able to speak to the severity of your symptoms. Um, those are those are the four main things that are going to help you with service connection. They're going to put you in that right direction. If you're missing any one of those four things, um, give us a call. Give us a call. We can absolutely help out. Um, you know, you can talk to one of our, our coaches and, and they can point you in the right direction. OK, um, I did see a question in there earlier about the, uh, about Nexus letters. Um, the VA doctors will not write Nexus letters for veterans. Nexus letters are um, they considered a, a what do they call it? They considered a, a <laughs> conflict of interest. Conflict of interest. That's it. Yeah. So um, they won't do it. So you can go to your 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 VA doctor and they can diagnose you with something and they can even verbally tell you, yeah, I'm sure that's related to service, but they will not write that nexus letter for you because they consider it a conflict of interest. Yeah. So go ahead. To piggyback on that, even a lot of primary care doctors that are outside the VA, um, maybe they, they'll try to write them, but what they really like write is a nexus statement. And that doesn't have a lot of a lot of weight to it, not a lot of probative value, right? So if I say Daryl owes me money, um, from an argumentative standpoint, that stands true until Daryl says, no, I do not. So if all you get is a statement saying it's at least as likely as not that this condition is related to that condition or this condition is related to that service, that's only as good as that statement until someone else says, no, you don't. But as soon as it, the, the counter argument comes in, it is not related because of this and that and another. Now that has weight because there's a rationale behind it. And most doctors don't give you that, that rationale. Now, now uh, when, you get, when you get set up with a, a professional who is good at writing those, um, who, who knows what they're doing, then they, they tie in how your specific situation and your records um, and your service relate to that condition and how that condition relates to another. And then they cite peer reviewed research and former um, VA case decisions and tie that all together in a, a uh, rationale that carries weight. So now it's not just this is related to that. And I'm a doctor, take my word for it. It's actually a, a, a rationale, a, a solid argument that then the VA has to has to counter if they're, if they're going to deny you. So it's it's a much different, much different position to be in. Right. And it's using that terminology that the VA is familiar with, um, yeah. which most most uh, doctors aren't really familiar with that stuff, um, especially like the least as likely as not less likely than not and more, <laughs> more likely than not. They're not really um, they're not really trained in, in writing that way. Uh, it's it's legalese on um, the way it's written. So um, so we did cover all four aspects. Uh, if you're missing one of those, like I said, come contact us, get it, get a hold of us. Um, we can look through your your stuff. We can look through your information, um, potentially get you over to uh, one of the one of the providers in our referral network, and uh, get that missing link. Um, also, get your butt to the doctor. That's that's one of the most important things. Is get your butt to the doctor. Um, you could have had an event in service, a back injury in service, 
but a lot of times the VA is looking for continuity of care now. You're out of service. Are you still being seen for your back? Are you still going to the doctor for your back? Um, they'll look at that kind of stuff. Is there medical evidence to support? And that's that's the uh, that's that's the whole thing. I mean, it's I know a lot of people have a lot of bad experiences with the VA, but realistically, if you turn in, if you follow that clues of triangle, you follow that golden circle, you submit that evidence, it gives the VA a really difficult time arguing with you and saying no when you've given them everything that they request that they ask for and, and they've got it. So um, let's go ahead and turn to some of the questions in the chat. Um, Tony Espinosa, if I submit DBQs from telemedic for an increase, will there be a CMP exam or will they just grant my increase based on my DBQ? All right. For those of you who don't know what a DBQ is, a DBQ is a disability benefits questionnaire. It's the form that when you go for a compensation and pension examination, it's the form that the doctor fills out and then turns back over to the VA. Um, a few years back, there were some public facing DBQs. Um, the VA went in and kind of took those away and now they're back again. Um, so if you have a DBQ, disability benefits questionnaire submitted by a credible doctor, um, the VA is supposed to forego any type of CNP examination. Um, they do have the ability to rate straight off that DBQ. All right. So um, my advice would be to get a DBQ if you have the access to that, get a DBQ, submit that as part of your credible medical evidence. Um, and technically, if if uh, if the VA gives you an examination, it's actually considered overdevelopment. But in some cases, when there's questions on a DBQ, the VA will still set you up with a CMP examination. Pretty rare, but it does happen. How long can you be out and file a claim? Well, Rodney, um, there, there is no end. There's no cap on how long uh, you can file a claim. I, we have uh, lots of Vietnam era veterans that come in and we, we uh, take care of them, they get through the system and they get the rating they more or less being legally deserved. Um, it's too late when you quit. You know, you have to you have to get in here. You have to do it. You have to get in the fight. Um, as long as you're willing to do that, it's it's, it's never too late. Um, I, and I did speak to presumptive conditions earlier, just kind of piggyback on that, Don, Donnie. Um, there were some presumptive conditions that do have time limits on them. Um, for example, the, the burn pit, um, sinusitis, rhinitis, asthma. But anything outside of that 10-year period that they give for that, you can still be diagnosed with the condition. You'll just have to get a nexus. Whereas if you're in that 10-year period, you don't need a nexus. Um, but there, yeah, like Donnie said, there is no, there is no time limit on a disability. Um, Jerry Sullivan, question, after you receive percentage, how long do you have before the VA can reduce your percentage? So typically what happens when you're given a percentage, um, anything that's like 10%, the VA will not touch. They won't go back in and look at it and say, no, we're going to take that away. Um, usually it's, it's, it's certain conditions, and I'll give you an example, PTSD, GERD, migraines. Those are the three biggest ones. Um, if somewhere along the line, somebody says that with treatment or with medication, your condition could potentially get better. Or if you say, I've been taking this medication and I think I'm getting better, um, the VA will do what's called a routine future exam. Usually they set those for five years out. Okay. So if, if you're not considered, if you're at hundred percent, you're not permanent total, you're just hundred percent scheduler, probably because you have a routine future exam. Um, those are five years. They, the VA, I was still rating at the time, but they changed it. So they're five years out. The only exception to that are cancers. So cancers are usually six months, um, prostate cancer, any, any kind of cancer, because with treatment, um, specifically like prostate cancer, if you have treatment or prostatectomy or removal of the prostate, then they have to rate off the residuals. So Cancers are a little different. They're usually six months, but every, other than that, everything else is usually five years out. And and temporary 100s, those are set up to be reevaluated pretty soon too. Yeah. Uh, that's a good point. <laughs> Total knee replacement, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is a migraine log necessary for a 50% rating or can I get 50% with just my DBQs reflecting multiple prostrating migraines a month? So 
Tony, uh, the rating for migraines has changed. It's no longer just multiple prostrating migraines per month. It's, uh, you know, it's, it says you have to have a lot of them. But the, the, the new added language um, is severe economic inadaptability. That means it has to hurt your wallet um, in some capacity. So, however, you know, you, you can reflect that it's, it's causing, um, it's impairing your ability to work and uh, would, would add value to that claim and make it more likely that you would get a 50% uh, rating. Now, it doesn't define that anywhere that I've seen or heard, and it, it leaves it pretty vague. And uh, realistically, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, you know, for some people, that means instead of 50 grand a year, you make 25 grand a year. Instead of a million dollars a year, you only make $500,000 a year. Like there's, there's no actual definition. It just says severe economic inadaptability. And that's that new language in, in the rating criteria that really leads it open to uh, subjective analysis. What are your thoughts on that, Daryl? Yeah, I, I usually explain it as if you have to call in sick, because you have a headache, if you have to come into work late or you have to leave early because you have a headache. Um, but once again, we go back to the the golden circle, right? Being able to talk to the severity of those symptoms. Um, and you don't want to talk about your symptoms on your best day. Talk about your symptoms on your worst day. So um, as part of as part of that tracking, I would always I would always ask veterans to track how many days they have to take off of work or how many days they have to call in sick or how many times they have to leave early. Um, and that way, because you're right, Donnie, there is no set definition of economic inadaptability, right? So it's up to the discretion of the examiner, essentially, at that point. So documentation, you know, I took four days off last week because I had a severe migraine. Um, usually it takes four days for it to go away. And this happens once a month over several months. Um, you know, that's that's just being able to speak to the severity of those symptoms. All right. Um, if we don't, if we if we answer your question, but it doesn't get right to the point, or it doesn't get to what you're you're actually asking, um, just slip another comment in, all right, and we'll we'll get to it. Um, Jeff, I'm at zero percent for asthma, but I've been using an inhaler since deployment. Does using an inhaler get me thirty percent? So first off, asthma is rated under sixty six oh two bronchial asthma, and it's basically it's based on the frequency, all right. So um, the 10% rating is you have an inhaler, um, you've been you've been prescribed an inhaler or some kind of bronchiotherapy, okay? Um, it's really based off of your FEV, um, and that is, uh, what is FEV? Let me look it up real quick, sorry. It's the, the blow test, right? The blow yeah, test. it is, that's, yeah, that's that's basically what it is. So um, it's based on, on on how far you can you can um, blow into that little device, right? Yeah. So um, having an inhaler, and they they should test with or without the inhaler, with a with a bronchodilator, with the inhaler, or without it. So it's really it all based on severity. So being able to speak to the severity and how often you have to use that inhaler. Um, uh, Ten percent is intermittent. Thirty percent is is uh, daily. So if you have to use it daily, just being able to speak to the severity of those symptoms, that's what's going to take you from that zero to potentially that 30 or 10 percent. OK, you know, DMAC, this is a good example of that, um, that strategy piece and the strategy, education, medical evidence. If you, you sign up for a coach, they're going to walk through this with you and identify if this is the increase you should be going for or if you have something else out there that maybe is a much more substantial increase and where in line that this that that uh, that claim should fall in your strategy and help you piece that all together. Um, so if you want to go over that with the coach, there's the link right there. Um, that's really it's really a key portion of getting the rating that you you more or less legally deserve. Yeah, and very very few people realize that it takes 27 10 percent to equal 100 percent service connection. So um, yeah, if you want to if you want to dime them to death, that's totally your call. Um, but my guess is that that a thirty percent can be a high value claim, but um, going for those bigger those bigger claims first, that's where that coaching comes in and that education comes into play for sure. And by the way, while we while we're talking about education and coaching, Brian's got a new book coming out. It's the uh, 
You Deserve It, second edition, and it's going to drop in April, April 11th of this year. So, um, you know, kind of while we have a little break here and, and that just happened to come up, you can get yourself a copy of that book, April 11th, You Deserve It, second edition. All right. And to, and to piggyback off of what you were saying earlier, Daryl, the 27 10 percent, right? Uh-huh. 27 claims. Um, let's say that you know you file um, two at a time and get those servers connected, and you have an average uh, adjudication time of three months, right? So we're still looking, we're still looking at years, years. Um, if you're lucky, and none of those were denied, whatever. Uh, right. The way VA math works is once you once you have a percentage, um, like say say you get a 70 percent rating then you're considered 30% healthy, right? So you have 70, they, 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 they subtract 70 from the 100, you have 30 left over. So then you get another 50% rating, so you have two claims. 50% of that 30 is 15, add the 15 to the 70, you're at 85, you get paid at 90. You get another 50% claim, you're still only at 92.5, right? So now you're three claims and 92.5, but now here the difference is, you get one more claim at 30%, you're at 100%, four claims, as opposed to 27 claims to get to 100%. And that's really the importance of that strategy. And if those are each filed uh, one at a time, three three months apiece, you're looking at 12 months as opposed to years and years. Right, right. You know, and, and I did mine in 16 years because there wasn't a company like this, but man, I sure wish there would have been because it would have been a lot quicker. <laughs> Absolutely. I think the number one complaint I hear is, why, why didn't I come here earlier? Yeah, <laughs> yep. Um, I have a CNP hearing Thursday for shoulder. Do I, do you have any tips for this that I should know? Um, honestly, CNP examinations are just being able to speak to the severity of your symptoms. In all honesty, that's, that's a hundred percent what they're all about. Um, yeah, that's, that's the best advice I can give you right now. Um, severity of your symptoms, talk about them, range of motion. You know, how far can you lift your arm up from your shoulder or from your from your leg up? That's, you know, and, and on that um, and not saying, Travis, by any means that, that you would. But be honest when you're going for your examination. Right. Be honest. The doctors know when you're malingering. They know when you're not telling the truth. So be honest. Best way to handle an examination. Um you know your symptoms, Travis. I don't know your symptoms. Nobody knows your symptoms like you do, so be able to speak to them, okay? And be vulnerable, too. You know, a lot of times veterans aren't honest because they're not t- talking about how bad it really is. You know, that's where, they, that's where the dishonesty comes in. You know, for instance, you, you know, you have a back problem, and maybe it, it, it causes some, some, nerve, some nerve damage in your back, and, you know, uh, it, makes you, it, it makes you pee your pants a little bit every now and then. Because you don't have that control you would have. No man wants to admit that. No person wants to admit that. But, you know, so you don't go in there and you say, you don't say that. And you don't talk about all the little things that are associated with, with that disability. Um, and all you're doing is is uh, is lowering the chances that you're going to get the rating that you deserve. Yeah. I, it's not the time to be a warrior, right? We're all taught to be warriors when we're in the military. Stomach everything. Swallow everything down. Don't let your feelings, your emotions show. CMP examine it not the time to do that that's the time to let those feelings out let everything be known um be uncomfortably vulnerable absolutely mark nichols medically board retired in 1990 in 2018 one of the conditions was lowered isn't there a time period where the rating becomes protective so yes um they have a 10-year rule and they have a 20-year rule okay the 10-year rule at the 10-year rule, they can reduce you down to zero, but they cannot take away your disability. <clears throat> the 20-year rule, they cannot reduce or take away your disability. So once you hit 20, 20 years with that disability, they cannot, they cannot reduce it and they cannot take it away. Anything up to that point, they can reduce it. At 10 years, they can't take it away. They can only reduce it. Anything before 10 years, they can take it away. Unless... The caveat to all of that is if they find it a fraudulent claim at any point, they can remove it. Even after 20 years, if it's fraudulent, they can remove it. Wait, and, um, so a nuance to that that most people don't realize is, so say you got service connected in 1990, and then in um, 2000 or 2001, you got an increase to a new rating. And then in 
2018, you got reduced back to the old rating. So you have to hold that rating for 20 years. Isn't that right, Daryl? Yes. If you get a new rating, then it starts that 20 year period over. Yep. Yep. All right. I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take David's question too because sleep apnea is my, my forte. Um, can sleep apnea be connected to in service back injury? Disability rating, 60%. Um, honestly, not likely. Your best choice or your best option for doing any kind of uh, sleep apnea, if you weren't diagnosed with sleep apnea in service, sleep apnea is the number one dis, uh, number one um, denied claim by the VA currently, okay? Um, because everybody wants to claim it, right? So with sleep apnea, you, you have... We've had a lot of luck linking it to respiratory condition, um, sinusitis, rhinitis, and even asthma. Asthma, asthma and, and sleep apnea, the symptoms kind of overlap each other, so you can only be service-connected for one of those conditions. But if you have a 10% asthma, why not go for the 50% sleep apnea, right? Um, so linking it to a respiratory condition, we've had a lot of luck. GERD, linking it as secondary to GERD, we've had a lot of luck. Um, GERD eats... Uh, it, it, choose away at that soft palate, which can cause breathing issues and, and therefore cause other respiratory conditions, sleep apnea. Um, mental health, not so much. Uh, it, it, it can be successful, but it's a fight. You really got to fight it. And it usually takes a few times and going back to the VA before they'll accept it. So, um, you know, a back injury, uh, you know, as of right now, the VA does not recognize uh, obesity or being overweight as a disability. Um, most of the time, if you tell them I can't exercise because I have a bad back, so I put on weight, um, they'll say that that exercise alone is not the only remedy to not being overweight. Caloric intake is is another way that you can control weight gain. So they've been denying those a lot based on caloric intake. Okay. And when, and when you sign up for our elite program, you get a coach and you, you develop that strategy. One of the things that the, the coach uh, evaluates is the probability of success. So you're, you're not, you don't, they're not going to set you up to go after these far-fetched claims or low likelihood of success, things like that, because you know the goal is to win and get the rating you deserve. So it's, this is the highest probability of success. This is the route you should go. Right. And, and you know what, when you do sign up, um, not only do you get, do you get a coach assigned to you, you get access, you know, we, we've talked on some of our resources that we have, but there are, there's literally a plethora of resources. We've got TikTok, we've got a uh, Facebook mastermind group, Lend Hero. If you're thinking about buying a home, we've got, you know, we've got that, uh, military, military disability made easy, a partner company. Um, help you simplify down that 38 CFR part four in the layman's terms, right? Because not everybody has the time to sit sit around and just learn the 38 CFR part four. Um, you know, we've got we've got Instagram, we've got um, Facebook Lives, we've got. I mean, there's all kinds of things that this this company offers. So if you're not a member currently, get on over, do your discovery call if you need to. Get signed up, get with a coach, and get moving on that VA disability. Um, you know, there is no time limit on it, but why wait, right? Why why wait when you have a company like this that can help you out with that process, can coach you and give you all the the resources to educate you on, on that VA claims process, right? Um, Mark Nichols was in the artillery eight years, have hearing loss and tinnitus, filed a claim and was deemed to have hearing loss and VA provided hearing aids but was denied service connection. Um, hearing loss is a funny beast. Uh, you know, even if you do get service connected at hearing for hearing loss, typically it's a 0% rating. Okay. Um, artillery, that's a tough one. So I'm just going to share a little of my story. So I worked on ground air missiles. I worked for Hawk Missile Systems. I worked on ground air missiles and uh, live fires all the time, right? Um, I was, I was, on launcher row, I was around the launchers. We had a we had a live fire. I've uh, I've claimed tinnitus and been denied tinnitus several times. So 
Um, I no longer claim it, but I was denied tinnitus several times. So I don't know why the VA would, I mean, I would have to take a look at your, your hearing examinations in order to determine my guess is that you were within normal limits at the time. Um, keep in mind, just because the VA issues something to you or, or, or diagnoses you with something, um, you still have to meet those, those four things for the, for service connection. Okay. So at the time that you took your test, you might've been within normal limits for, for hearing loss for the VA. Um, and that's where that coach, that coach comes in because the coach can actually look at what records you provide and, and die or not diagnose, but kind of dive into those records and, and give you the path of least resistance and, and the path that's going to get you to where you want to be. Unfortunately, hearing loss is typically 0%. So that's not typically a path that, that you want to just run down, right? By itself anyway. Real quick, Ken, Ken Wyatt said, well, I mean, if you'll help vets from South Alabama, he help vets all over the world. I've had clients in Guam, South Korea, Ukraine, um, Germany, all over the place. Wherever vets go, we help them. Oh, yeah. South Alabama? Heck, yeah. You know, every time I hear the word Alabama, it just takes me back to Forrest Gump. She's going back to Greenbow, Alabama. Um, <laughs> When I, when, I, when I hear South Alabama, it reminds me of, of uh, the Panhandle of Florida. They, we, we called it South Alabama. Yeah. Like, this so is we, South Alabama. <laughs> so even if I can prove an in-service injury, this is Judith, can prove I needed treatment even after I got out of the Navy and get the DBQs in the Nexus letter, if my Navy doctor, physical therapist, declared it resolved, then I'm SOL. Um, I'm not going to say totally but that's where a coach can come in. Um, I, and I, I honestly, I can't answer that without looking at the records. Um, if you had a condition while you're in service, typically if you have a condition while you're in service and that condition resolves itself while you're in service, and then you have problems with that condition later on, the VA is more than likely going to try to link that condition to something else in your life. Um, because, because your doctor said that that condition resolved while you're in service. But Judith, if you're not a member already, I would suggest you sign up, get yourself a coach, get those records over to them, let them review them and see what they can do, right? See where, see where that can go. All right. I am overall 100% permanent and total disability. Can the VA reduce that? Um, not everything with the VA is, is 100%, right? But if you're 100% permanent and total, and you don't ever file another claim again, you don't ever do anything as far as filing a claim again, the VA has no need or want or desire to pull your records, to look at them, okay? Um, and this is coming from a, a former rating specialist. As a rating specialist working for the VA, I didn't have time to just go randomly pull people's records, <clears throat> right? Because there are hundreds of thousands of veterans out there that, that are filing claims. So I didn't have just randomly go and pull somebody's records. Now, if you're seeking treatment for those conditions and you're going to the VA to seek treatment for those conditions, um, there is a possibility that that condition can improve. And if it does improve, then it really is your is your duty and your um, as as an honorable person to report that 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 condition has improved. Okay, but as far as the VA just going in and randomly pulling claims, they don't do that. All right, we got about seven more minutes. I'm already 50% for mental health, but during my CMP exam last, it opened up, I had PTSD for MST. Should I put in a claim for that too? All right, um, so with mental health, you can only be service connected for one mental health condition at a time. And once you're already service connected for that condition, the diagnosis is really irrelevant, okay? Um, all, all mental health examinations, are, are all mental health conditions are rated using the same criteria, all right? And if they try to do two conditions, that's called pyramiding, and um, it's against the rules as far as the VA goes. So if you're diagnosed with, if you're, if you're service-connected for depression at 50% and they come back a week later and they say, nope, you've got PTSD, it, it's irrelevant. If they come back a week after that and say you have Chevy Silverado, it's irrelevant. It's all rated the same way. Um, so... Filing a new claim on top of that, really what you're going to want to do is just file for an increase on the 50%. Okay. 
being able to speak to the severity of your symptoms. And and on top of that, uh, as Daryl said, the severity of symptoms, it's it's the current severity. You know, a lot of people, they want to go in and talk about things that happened in 1972 on an increase. And the increase, really, they evaluate the period from your, your last TNP exam till present day. And it's what is wrong with you in present day? What are your symptoms now that, that's going to affect your rating? Right. Um which brings us to the CMP examination in and of itself. So uh, the VA does know that some examiners don't do an adequate job of giving examinations, okay? Um, and they don't do it all the time. It's just sometimes it's something that's overlooked. So if you ever feel like you got a bad, bad CMP exam, um, there are some paths you can take in order to make sure that that's documented. Number one is a memorandum of record. Um, but once again, signing up with, with a coach here at VACI they can help walk you through that process or coach you and educate you in that process of what you do when you get a bad CMP exam. They do happen, unfortunately. Um, how do you report it? Who do I tell? How do I talk about it? Um, the important thing with that is to make sure you do that memorandum of record before they make a decision. They make a decision on the claim and you complain about it afterwards. It just looks like you're complaining. So, um, yeah, memorandum of record beforehand. Try to get through as many questions as we can. We got a lot of questions in here. Um, hey guys, 90% rated. I have been seeing a psychiatrist for two years at the VA. I have not put in a depression claim. Could I get 200% with a claim filed? Um, 90%, anything's possible. Um, you know, I can't, like I said, I, I can't, I don't know your specific situation. I don't know your specific claims that you have in. Um, that's where having that coach comes into play. Right. Yeah, there, there's so many variables there um, that we just don't have the information for. You know, um, do you already have a mental health condition service connected or no? What would, what is that rating on that one? Um, yeah, it's it's. Tough. I mean, could I? Um, yes, because you can get to 100 percent on mental health alone. So it is possible, but the the probability is hard to determine without having a lot more information. Yeah, were you were you previously denied for mental health? What did that look like? All kinds of variables there. All right. I have, this is Sarah Blanks. I have 50% on migraines and I heard that my vertigo and arthritis that's in my neck due to migraines can be claimed as a resulting disability from my, and I can get compensation for that. Is it true? Um, same deal. Yeah, it's possible. Um, you know, it is, it is possible. It all depends on the severity of your symptoms, the diagnosis that you get. Um, having that nexus linking your, your vertigo to your to your migraines um you know there's there's still a lot of variables there and this is all where and these are very good questions don't get me wrong very good questions but these are questions that somebody who has access to your your information and has a conversation with you um can determine a lot better than we can um just on this facebook live okay i'm currently at 80 percent for two failed back surgeries and ptsd with one state of being mental ward my doctor is telling me to be happy with what I have. Do I need to see another doc or just hang it up? Um, yeah, so I had a VSO that told me I should be happy with 70%, and I had a whole bunch of stuff out there that um, was related to service to include being medevac from Iraq and all kinds of stuff, and he told me just to be happy. And that was not good advice because I'm now 100% PNT. I would say you definitely need to get with a coach. You sign up for our elite program and – get a strategy together and, and go and get the rating that you uh, morally, ethically, and legally deserve, brother. Um, Scott Mendoza, can you qualify for more than one issue under the PACT Act, burn pit, agent orders, et cetera? Yes, absolutely, you can. Um, just keep in mind, though, that exposure in and of itself is not a disability. So if you served in Vietnam and you, you had that longevity of service and it put you in the Gulf, um, yeah, absolutely. Agent Orange, Burn Pit, both. Okay. You have, if you have those conditions, if you have a condition that's service connectable, by all means, particulate matter. Um, you know, you worked on a flight line and you were around the, uh, the foam that the firefighters used. Um, absolutely. You can qualify for more than one. You just have to have that diagnosis of more than one. Okay. And then be able to have the service to link it to, to the PACT Act or to those, those specific areas. All right. Um, we're almost at the top of the hour, Donnie. Uh, it's been a pleasure 
working with you, teaching with you, educating with you. You too, brother. Always. Um, make sure that if you are not signed up, get on and do that discovery call. Uh, it costs nothing. It's free to do. Get on there. Talk to somebody. Um, talk to somebody about your specific situation. Get yourself a coach. Get get access to our resources, right? Um, I wish I would have had access back in the day when I was doing mine. So um, until we until we see each other again in the hallways, it's been a pleasure. Everybody have a great day or not. The choice is yours. <laughs>